Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Unto you, eternal rock of ages, once again we come to bless. We come to thank. We come to say thank you for your faithfulness. You're faithful every day. Thank you, Lord. When the enemy third he got us in his hand, you come by your spirit to rescue us. You deliver us from his hand and uh, you, you shine light into our darkness. You, you made the way possible for us to see so that we might walk in it. We thank you for keep putting food on our tables when we are hungry. We thank you for putting roof over our heads when we don't have shelter. We thank you for clothing us when we seem naked. We thank you for always speaking your word to us. Faithful God, we say thank you. As we go into your word this morning, we ask that you, Lord, please breathe on us afresh. Amen. Teach us to continue to understand, to continue to know, to continue to come close to you so that we can always feed from you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. morning, by the grace of God, we want to share something that is so crucial to our Christian journey. I mean, one of, of course, we've been sharing a couple of stuff like that, but I, I want us to see something that, like, that is one of the most important to the core of this journey. Do not forget, as a Christian, we are in a journey. We are in a journey. And we are going somewhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we are joining back to God. That is the fact. We were far away from him. Jesus came, paved the way, made it possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that we can now reconnect back to our Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we are joining back to him like the Israelites journeying to the covenant land, to the promised land. Amen. Amen. We, we, we've been delivered from our stupidity which is our Egyptian kind of mind, you know what I'm saying? And we are we some of us are passed through the wilderness, we some of us are still going through the wilderness, and at sometimes in this journey we get to a place called Elin whereby we think everything is, is ready. This is where we want to settle. No, that's not the place. We're still journeying until we get to the promised land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this morning out of so many things that we receive from God as inheritance, the most important among the core is called the life of God and the blood of Jesus. So the topic this morning is the life of God and the blood of Jesus. We need to understand this and how they operate in us. Praise the Lord. As a believer, you need to understand the life of God and the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 At the creation, the first man who inherited everything God created, I mean, that was an interesting thing. God made everything available and he just made man and put him there and said, just be in charge of everything. That's the best inheritance I've ever seen in my life. One man inherited everything. So it was in control. And this is it. He received a substance from God while he was still in his unconscious and while he was still unconscious of his environment. Amen. And the substance was described as the life of God. <laughs> the substance he received that made him become a living person, a living being, was called the life of God. Without the breath of God, we are nothing. We will always exist in our unconscious self. That's what it means. By the time Adam woke up to the reality of his environment, the life of God that was breathed into him has made him. I need to know that word made him. Right? And he became everything that can represent God among other creations. 
definition of God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The breath that God breathed into, <laughs> into Adam was not oxygen. Right? I mean, you can say, oh, we, without oxygen, of course, here on earth we can exist. That's just the truth. And one funny thing that I find out, you know, while I was trying to just read a little bit about oxygen, you cannot have, your body cannot have 100% oxygen, you will die. It will kill you. But you need a certain amount of it to exist. That's why when you get to the hospital and people are lacking bread, they, 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 they attach the oxygen uh, machine to them. Amen? Amen? To keep them breathing. But the bread God gave man was not oxygen. You will see pretty soon. It was what God gave man was what made God to be God in all his entirety. In the ability of creation, in the ability to live forever. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because oxygen is limited. But this life we are talking about is not limited. Unfortunately, distortion set in when the serpent entered the garden, you remember, and deceived Eve. And Adam willingly relinquished the authority given, I mean, the authority given him by God to the serpent. So corruption entered into man and it altered that spiritual substance called life. If you look at Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, the Bible speaks and says, uh, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. The Greek word for life is zoe. Amen. And uh, it does not interpret oxygen. It means it's a spiritual substance that makes God to be God. So what God actually was looking for was himself. He just wants to see himself in the display. The reason why he created you and I is for us to be like him, as him, here and now. Think like him, make decisions like him, rule by him, associate by him. Are you getting me? You know? Do everything as him. So that when he sees you and I, doing anything, either at work or in school or at home or while we're driving or we're out there with our friends, wherever we are found, God will look at you and say, yes, that is me. That was his purpose. He wants to see himself. So, man became a living being but unfortunately, that code, that spiritual code became distorted. And it was covered up with sin. Let's look at uh, Leviticus chapter 17, verses uh, 11 and 12. Leviticus. Praise God. Chapter 17, verses 11 and 12. For you to understand what life and the blood is. It says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Therefore I said, to the children of Israel, 
life and blood, even though the life is in the blood. God gave life. Amen. Amen. And it is that life that's, that makes. Amen. The life does not do what the blood does. But let me get it ahead of myself. I mean, the life creates, the life makes. But the blood washes. Okay? The blood washes, it cleanses. Without cleaning, the life can't function. That's why the blood of Jesus has to be shed. I'm going somewhere. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Alright? Secondly here, at the recreation or at the rebirth of man, the man who is supposed to inherit everything, the man was supposed to inherit everything but to do it in the right way. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. According to the plan of the owner of all things. Both the blood and the life were released together as water and blood to buy us back so the work of grace could be finished in righteousness. John chapter 9 verse 34. You can write that down. I read it from here. It says, But one of the soldiers pierced his side, that's the side of Jesus Christ, with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. There's a reason they were separated. Blood and water came out. Reason. The blood is the cleanser. I said that earlier. When the life is the maker, the life is what's reconstructs is what remakes. Meanwhile, remaking or reconstruction cannot be done until there is a washing away of the corrupted substance that was attached to the original substance called life. Are we together? Yes. Oh, glory to God. Amen. The life that God gave man was still there in him, even when the devil corrupted him. So it, the devil added corruption to that life, so it became distorted. It cannot, it's no longer clear. It's like raw gold, but that is not useful. So the blood has to be released so that that man, the person of man in his spirit, can be washed, can be cleansed. So that the life of God can now remake him. That is why when you and I gave our lives to Jesus, as uh, submitted our lives to Jesus as our Lord and Savior, immediately the blood of Jesus was released first to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. That is why after we were now cleansed and we were forgiven, that we can now start thinking as God. I keep saying the next 
negatives. I will attract the negatives. It's a, I mean, it's a natural law. Now, in uh, the book of uh, John chapter 1 verse 1 to 5, John described Jesus as the word that was there at the beginning of all things. Let's open to it. The book of uh, John chapter 1 verse uh, 1 to 5. The Bible says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made part of creation through him and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. Hallelujah. The word there is speaking about Jesus. In him was life. That's so we. That, that, that spiritual substance that makes God to be God. That spiritual substance that makes him to be everlasting in a domain that is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I, I want to pause a little bit and say this to us. Everybody will live forever. Yes, sir. Everybody, either you do good or you do bad or whatever it is, it is that you do. Everybody will. But the state you now live in is what makes the difference. Go back to the story of Abraham, I mean, of uh, the, the rich man and Lazarus. While both died, they went, no, pardon me. I'll speak according to the scriptures. One died, the other one, the other one was taken up. Amen. Read your back very well. It was never written that Lazarus died. He was taken to the bosom of Abraham. But the rich man died. But both could see each other on the other side. Amen? They both lived over there. But where one was is different from where the other was. Hallelujah. Even though living forever is still every human being's portion, but the sign of the forever you live now matters. It's the choice that we make from here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the blood, once it cleanses us, it positions us, hallelujah, mm -hmm. into the side of God. Mm -hmm. That's why we know that once our sins are washed and cleansed, we are repositioned. Then the light of God can shine in us. That's why we are so good. I am so sure that if I switch to the other side right now as I'm speaking, I know where I'm going. Do you? Do you? And in case you do, is it going to be the good place? All right, let's see. Let's continue. Paul Apostle wrote in the book of Corinthians, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, to, uh, 45 to 49, and he said, So it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, talking about Jesus, became a life-giving spirit. is not first, but the natural. And afterward, the spiritual, the fourth man was of the earth, made out of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven, as was the man of dust. So also are those who are made of dust, and as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we upon the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Praise God. Amen. My brother and I 
I was sharing yesterday, and I mean, and we were, as we were praying, you know, for service today, and I was sharing his testimony with me, and I was like, God, this is you. We once bore the image of Adam. We all did. I don't care either you killed somebody or not, or you are an adulterer or not. That is not the issue. Nobody on this earth was born righteous. You might start counting somebody's sin is more than yours. That is your own headache. But the point is, you are not righteous either. We were all sinners. And we all came short of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. And thank God for Jesus who redeemed us and brought us back. Glory to God. We all bore the image of Adam. Now he's saying that if we could bear that, we can also bear the image of the man, which is heavenly. And that is Jesus Christ. And until the blood does his work in me, I cannot bear the image of the second man. It will uh, be a good thing for me to say this here. I've seen how people make use of the blood of Jesus in a very uh, inappropriate way. Let me put it that way. The primary assignment of the blood is to cleanse you. And the blood speaks. The blood has voice. I will share that with us pretty soon. You don't want to say you plead the blood of Jesus on your car, plead the blood of... No, 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 no. The New Testament made it so explicit. It was in the Old Testament time that God asked the children of Israel to put the blood by their little. Amen? Amen. That when the angel of death is passing by, once he sees the blood, he will pass over their house. Amen. Amen. At that time, it was a significant uh, 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 symbol for the angel, not for you. Either you see the blood or not, it does not matter. You can't do anything. But once the angel is coming, you that is sent by God, oh, glory to God. Now, I'm receiving something as I'm speaking. Once the angel of death is coming and is passing by, and he sees the blood by your doorpost, he won't destroy your house. So he will go look for the house that has no blood. Oh God. Then he's going to destroy. Same way today. The blood, we don't put it by a lintel. We put we use it to wash our spirits. Amen. For cleansing, to wash our souls, for and our bodies for us to be clean. So when the angel of destruction or death is passing by, even while you are sleeping, mm -hmm. and he checks your house, mm -hmm. and he does not see the blood of Jesus cleansing oh, you, hey. that will be dangerous. But the moment he sees, either you sleeping or snoring, or you eating, or you dancing, or whatever you are in your house, when the angel comes, don't forget the angel are sweet spirits. The speed at which they move is so fast. And when they pass this by, they see your house and say, wow, this guy is bearing the, the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ, like Paul said. If you just pass by saying, mm, I'm not touching God's servants, I'm not touching God's children. That is the significance of the blood in our days. In the New Testament. Cleanse your heart. Be clean. Let the life has its way of rebuffing or remaking you. <laughs> Glory to God. As we bear the image of the man of the dust, so we will bear the image of the Son of God, the heavenly man, who is Jesus Christ. Our spiritual reborn was made possible by the life.
by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bears witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. These are the guys that takes record in heaven. God the Father himself, the Word, who is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Amen. Amen. These three are one. And there are three that bear witness on us. A symbol like that says the Spirit, the Water, and the Blood. And these three agree as one also. You will see the presence of the Holy Spirit, but I mean, both in heaven and here on earth. Then. The Spirit is part of what happened in heaven. The Spirit is part of what's happening here on earth. Glory to God. And now it says, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he has testified of his Son. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar. Because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. And this is the testimony. I need you to hear this very well. That God has given us eternal life. This is the testimony. That God has given us, you and I, eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Who is that? Jesus Christ. He who has the Son has life. Oh, glory to God. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. He that does not have Jesus in him does not have this spiritual uh, uh, substance that makes God to be God. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of of the Son of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like that statement that you may continue. Mm. That you may continue. Mm. That you may continue. That you may continue. That you may continue. It, that you may continue. That, it saddens my heart when I see people that start off with Jesus and ended up in the hand of Satan. Mm. Most especially great musicians were born in the church, talented. But not all of them will still have great people doing gospel. Amen. But some of them ended up in the hand of the devil, the wicked one. Because they were promised the riches of this world. And they become discontented in doing the things of God. To them it becomes boring. How can we go to church and clap in the choir every time? Uh -uh. I need to be the star. I need to shine. That's what happened to them. That's what made it fall. I need to shine. I mean, I've got this gift of God. I'm going to use it and, and prosper with it. There's nothing wrong with prospering with it. Go ahead, brother. But make sure you don't leave God's sight. That you may continue to believe in the Son of God. There's need for continuity. Praise God. Hallelujah. The blood speaks two languages. And the, it speaks the language of mercy and it speaks the language of vengeance. When it speaks mercy, it leads to repentance. And, uh, and then release to clean up and clear out the dirt so that the life of God can cascade into our mother flesh and takes over. Amen. Amen. You see that in 1 John chapter 1 verses 5 to 10 it says, This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light and him is no darkness at all. 
have fellowship with one another. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from what? From all sin. It's my favorite scripture. From all sin. The next line says that if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. It says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Why does he have to do cleansing for us? So that the life can have its place in us. So that Zoe can take over, cascade into our mother flesh, spirit, soul, and body. That each step we take it to be God sinning, serving us, taking those steps. I don't know about you. I've seen a couple of things happening in my life that there's some steps I took without praying. I don't know if you get me. Without going before God, I said, Lord, I want to take this particular step, you know, or you need to show me or you need to lead me. I will just take it by the Spirit. And it will be the thought of God manifesting through me. Like the scripture says, that as I, I be in the way, the Lord led me. So it will be, as you take your step to do some certain things, it will be God doing it in you and through you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that's why we have to be cleansed first. We have so many people that go to church and they are not clean. They are not. Don't let us deceive ourselves. We know the truth. We know the truth. And people are just looking for an excuse not to do the right thing. We know the truth. So, when the blood speaks mercy, it allows us to have a repentant heart. Amen. Amen. And the blood is released for us to be cleaned out. Glory to God. Amen. But when the blood speaks vengeance, it brings this connection, isolation, and eventually leads to destruction. I repeat that. When the blood speaks vengeance, it brings this connection destruction, isolation, and destruction. You see that in the life of Cain and Abel. Let's read Genesis chapter 4, verses 12, 10 to 12. Genesis 4, 10 to 12. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? If you have good Bible student, you will remember, I mean, the story. How Cain killed Abel because he believed his, his offering was accepted by God and his was not accepted by God. So he was angry and God told him, if you have done well, won't your offering will have been accepted? I mean, why getting angry over nothing? You, you know the truth. But you chose to give what you gave. It's your choice. And every action has its own you know, uh, uh, reactions. He says, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know, he lied. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what have you done? God was speaking to him. So what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. That's how I know that blood has voice. That's how I know that if you kill innocent people, their voice will haunt you for life. That's why God wants us not to kill. Amen? Humans are not supposed to kill another human. So it says, the voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed. My number one. Because the blood is crying for vengeance, this connection comes from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Now listen to this. Says, when you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. 
Even though you till, even though you work hard, even though you labor, you will not get the fullness of what you are laboring for. So there is now a disconnection between him and his fruitfulness. He says, A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. Isolation. He's not isolated. And eventually, destruction sets in. Now, I need us to understand. There are two ways you can kill people. Some say, I'm not a murderer. I've never killed anybody. I've never handled a gun. Obviously, yes, I haven't either. I don't even know how to either. But here is the deal. I may not have killed anybody physically, but how have I killed somebody with my tongue? Some people are so good at using their tongue to finish the life of another sister or finish the life of another brother. Some can use their tongue to destroy your personality when you are not there. I've seen it happen. Life. I know, I mean, you might have also experienced such. They would have destroyed you. By the time you appear, people will see you as a destructive material. They will, they, they, will, they will see you with the eye of what they've been told. And before you know it, let it be that the whole anointing is upon you. But because of what has gone ahead of you, because of what somebody said, you will not be able to do anything tangible. Ask Jesus. He couldn't do any miracle, even in his own time, because of how people ridiculed him. With their mouth, with their tongue. So be careful, so that when the blood begins to speak for vengeance, you will not be a partaker of that evil. I'm getting to close now. Revelation chapter 6, verses 9 to 11. Very powerful scripture. Uh, Revelation 6.
God will avenge for their souls. But the number is not yet complete. What's the number? I don't know. <laughs> How many? I don't know. But God knows. And He is counting, by the way. Until the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who will be killed as they were. Today, people are being martyred by, uh, by people for the sake of the gospel. In Nigeria, that I know of, they were killing Christians because of their belief system. They burn churches down, they go to churches, and they, they, shoot, they shoot them randomly because they are worshipping God. Because they are worshipping Jesus. Because the name of Jesus is on their lips. Those guys, they, they, wouldn't, they didn't die uh, uh, for the sake of just dying. They are part of this group of people. In China, they put you to jail if you mention the name of Jesus. Don't worry. Do whatever you do right now. God is counting the number. God is counting. And once the number is complete, don't worry about the rest. God knows how to take care of it. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long? O Lord, true, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on us. Praise the Lord. So the blood speaks mercy. And it speaks vengeance. It's like the two edged swords of God. When it goes forth out, it goes in vengeance, and when it comes back, it comes in mercy. Amen. Mm -hmm. Once it goes out, it goes in, in, in judgment and in, in avenging for his people, but when it comes back, it comes back in mercy. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, this we need to understand. The blood speaks for you and I. The blood of Jesus washes and makes new. Hallelujah. I mean, I have never seen anything like this in the history of man, and neither can it be. Only the blood of Jesus can make you clean, not medication. Hallelujah. Not medication. They will tell you, those that make medicine will tell you that they are only suppressing. And why you use more of that, it affects something else in your body system. But the blood of Jesus is the only medicine, hallelujah, hallelujah. You, we can use that will not affect any other thing but cleanse all the rubbish away. Amen. He said, God was speaking to them, he said, it is the blood that makes atonement. That means it's the blood that cleanses, it's the blood that makes whole. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word, for this. We thank you for the life of God and we thank you for the blood of Jesus. And Jesus, because we know it is in you that the life actually resides, and you gave it on the cross for our sake, we say thank you. thank you. For your blood that cleanses us, that releases the life of God, making us to, to think as God, making helping us to, to have a reconstruction in our perspective in the way we see things.